Let me just say this might be the greatest thumbnail I've ever made for a YouTube video, but I unironically mean it, it actually is impossible to pick a favorite character. Don't get it twisted, as seen by the thumbnail, you can get some eye candy in any given Deadmount Deathplay episode, but it doesn't change the fact from having a character solitaire who kidnapped a prime minister for basically the lols, threw him in a manga cafe, and when people started rumbling that hey, they're doing this for political motivation reasons, he kidnapped the entire opposition to just say, I don't care about politics, I'm about sending a message overall. You have a new character who, I can't be the only one, who looks at Lei and say, anyone who's played either Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, that is a Korok. Literally, that backpack, that obnoxiously large backpack and that small character design is basically the equivalent of a Korok, but instead of carrying little seeds of, well, poop, because that's what they give you, Instead, we're carrying around a bunch of shark merchandise because this girl is just so infatuated with them. The characters across the board, top to bottom, are absolutely fantastic. And for an episode that's really about establishing future plot threads, as not only are we approaching the end of this core, this season in general has been a lot of establishing, getting to know characters, setting up plot threads. When we come back and fall for the second core, things are really gonna pop off, especially with the police. I mean, they know a lot, they're getting a lot right, we have assassins, we have death gods, it is so good. And seriously, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this will probably be my favorite work that this author has done. That includes Bakano, that includes Tarara, like, th this show is just so good, and I love it top to bottom. Now, full live reaction episode 8 is available on my Patreon, if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts, you can head on over there and consider support. The show's great. It is unapologetically horned up. You can't deny it. Every time we see Clarissa, she's basically sleeping with at least two beauties. The last time, it was when she was in her bedroom and they were basically having naked pillow fights, and in this episode, yeah, I mean, we, we know what's going on. We don't necessarily have to see the actual scene to basically get what's implied that she gets beauties and the beauties get her and goddamn despite the amount of fan service that gets thrown on her you can't deny that she is a bad bitch and she gets the job done but at the end of the day i think the star attraction of this show is what's going to happen with a corpse god who has now infiltrated what should be a dead character's body who is basically set to inherit a ridiculous amount of power and money. We now have the authorities, basically, they have everything in the palm of their hand, it's just they haven't connected all the dots completely. The fact that you end this episode with them being the first customers of basically Polka and Corpse God's new fortune-telling business, and you have Buddy hiding under the desk because he doesn't want to get arrested. It's just great because not only do you just keep saying this is the coolest character. Like, I still think Solitaire is probably the best overall character I've seen, but Leia's character is honestly really compelling. Honestly, some humor there that I quite enjoy, a tragic backstory that I really enjoy, and just overall the idea of being this loyal servant and looking at this fake being like, why would this man who I respect so much, who gave me a second chance, didn't toss me away like my own father, why would you not only dot over this weak polka, now you're accepting a fake who's infiltrated his body. Like, obviously you see the resentment there, but the idea of going from they're spying on our characters, they're gonna listen and discover these secrets, instead, what Lei ends up getting out of that entire situation is it's a bunch of weeaboos. Because they're probably playing Dungeons and Dragons. I hear dice, I think that's dice. Because who the hell is gonna rationally think, oh, the sound I'm hearing is bones, because someone's doing a dance with a bunch of skeletons. No, no one's gonna think that because this isn't a fantasy world to them, at least not just yet. And the idea of just, are they talking about a light novel? Are they talking about an anime? Don't know. But it's pretty humorous because the whole idea of someone suspecting we can't trust you to then the first thing you hear when listening in, hoping to get some dirt that proves they're scumbags, is are they talking about an anime? What type of weeaboo nonsense are they going over? But it's kind of fantastic. I have no idea how long it will take for this character to switch mentalities from going to I hate you to maybe potentially being a good ally if forever it will be this back and forth. But either way, a pretty great character because casually ending last episode with the girl who basically is just so enthralled with the exact same shark that Polka is now inhabiting, basically comes in, I lost my room, all my shark stuff is gone, and I'm looking at this Korok backpack saying, did you buy all this on the way home? Did you have a secret stash in case of emergency instead of, you know, break in case of fire? It's like, hey, break in case of all my sharks are going up in flame? I don't know. The sleeping bag was rather cool though, I have to give her credit there. 
And just the whole idea that basically, you know, it's kind of funny having like that message play on the phone because it pretty much gets, if you really interpret between the lines, it's kind of like, hey, you already stole my son's body. So how about you share a room with them for a couple of days while things get settled? And I'm like, yeah, you can't really argue against that. But it's pretty great, man. I like the fact that the cop storyline is intertwined with what's going on with this whole Death God plot line. The fact that they're pretty much connecting the dots quite well, whether it's footprints that line up to the girls always hanging around him. The fact that, okay, he has the name recognition, it connects here, he was at the scene of the crime. Everything is lining up, it's just a matter of how long until they realize what type of supernatural craziness, if not nonsense, is going on, and what would that do? Do they become potential allies? Do they just try to arrest? Because they know their business operation now, like, you can't really run from them, it'd be better if you kind of work with them, but who knows what they want to do, right? But seriously, I really do find that this cast of characters is actually one of the strongest of this season, because rather than just having a couple of good characters or some eye candy in the background. Instead, every character that gets a spotlight for longer than an episode's worth of time really does become something more compelling. A hacker of the group who basically you think is just going to be kind of like that mischievous kind of guy who doesn't really care, you really start to see like how he can look at things and be like, we're actually the scumbags, or someone who was willing to kill herself because she recognized she was a scumbag and probably doesn't differentiate between good and evil. All these characters get time and spotlight, and even if maybe the initial personality doesn't hook you in, clearly they're developing into something much better. And honestly, in terms of initial personalities, this cast has like a, it has a really good batting average in terms of how good they are at the start, whether it's casually coming in with a giant backpack full of sharks, to then in, like kind of evolving into this tragic backstory of losing all four limbs and basically being discarded, and the man who decides to give you a second chance is the man who has connections to both above ground, legal, normal operations, but also has criminal connections, and seriously, the idea of that robotic technology, we were talking about giving it to Polka last episode, the idea of giving them fake limbs in order to give them that second chance, it's a really good story hook of why you're so loyal to someone who didn't toss you aside and had no reason to do so. And the fact that rather than it just being he's a good person, it's a mixture of there was a decent person there, as seen by some of the smiles and remarks he gives, but at the end of the day, you are the perfect guinea pig to test this new technology, so it's kind of like a win-win no matter what. I mean, I've been hyping this one up since episode 1, and I'll probably be hyping it up all the way to episode 24, because this show is really, really well done, and I'm absolutely loving my time with it. I mean, I may meme the amount of, like, Yuri and side boob energy that this show gives me, but it, you can't deny that most of the videos that I talk about this show, I'm talking talking about things other than that because this show is absolutely fantastic and the characters top to bottom are absolutely gold but thoughts feelings yourself down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell so you can get notified when i upload more dead mount death play on the channel and as i mentioned full live reaction to this episode is available on my patreon if you're interested and while you're there you'll also get a video shout out so today we have spectra x nico speeder 2020 and xeno so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one